Hey y'all, I'm Kate Josephine Johnson. I'm a certified FreshBooks accounting partner, and this video is what I'm calling a crash course in FreshBooks. So it's for people who are new to FreshBooks and want to quickly move through learning the basics of the software to get started doing their bookkeeping for their business. You're going to see me in a different setting as I recorded this. Um, some clients of mine who were starting a second company uh, were needed to start a FreshBooks account, and I said, hey, can I set it up for you so I can create a demo of how to do this and where a brand new company would need to go inside of FreshBooks to get everything set up properly. So that's why you'll see me in a different setting. The video is very thorough. If you watch to the end, I truly believe you'll have a good knowledge of FreshBooks and how to start using it properly. You'll be able to grow from there, but these are the absolute fundamentals that you need to be implementing. If you opened a FreshBooks account a while ago and your books are pretty messy, you can reach out and I can give you some advice on perhaps cleaning them up or perhaps starting a new account. Um, one of the things I demonstrate is how to import historical transactions. And so if that's for you, then you'd be able to um, start a new account that way. That's where this video is going to start. It's going to start for those folks who are signing up for a brand new account. And there's a 90 day free trial link below. Tag me with any questions you have. Reach out if you need a consultation. All right, let's dive in. All right, here's the link for the 90 day free trial that accountants can get you. Put your email in, create a password. You'll be asked to verify your email, but then you'll be able to log into an account and you'll come here to your dashboard. Following these steps here is helpful. You can set up your company details. You can click here. You can also click here. We'll click here. One of the things FreshBooks is best at is being able to help you invoice clients and tracking down those uh, sales and making sure you get paid. And so you can come here to logo and theme and play with some of these settings because this is what is going to be used to build a lot of your invoices. If you come here, you can set a custom color that would be nice for your brand colors. And then also clicking through here, there are th three different templates that you can choose from depending on your style. If you add company details here, that can populate through on your invoices and such. These email notifications you can play with. If you want to communicate with your clients that you, related to their invoices, you can do that here. Payments, when a comment is added on a project, if you have if you're using FreshBooks for estimates or proposals, you can uh, set these email notifications here. If you already have clients, you would come here, uh, adding a client manually here or importing clients from CSV. When you build your CSV file, you need first name, last name, company, email address, phone number. That will allow you to get that data into FreshBooks properly. For this client though, we're not importing any clients, so I'm, not, I'm gonna skip that. Adding a client manually will simply just take you to, this is the standard new client screen, and you'll start typing here. You have the ability to set reminders for your clients. You can charge late fees, set your currency. So that's some of the new client information. I'm gonna go ahead and check that. And shoot, I closed out my little box here that had those four steps, but I remember what they were. The third step was going to be to add items and services. You can go here to the gear icon, add items and services. So items and services are unique. So when you're creating an invoice, if you type in something that you sell straight from the invoice page, it's going to populate this here. To, it's going to populate it to items. It's never going to populate it to services. But a lot of you are probably selling services, so it's, it's kind of unfortunate that you have to come here first if you want it to s sit here in services. For this particular client, she's only selling services, so this is where I'm going to add them. You can also come here and create item or service. One thing to note, I'm back here in the items tab, you can import a list of items. I'll show you here what you need, and your CSV needs to have name, description, and rate. And you'd be able to import those here. Again, that's for this items concept though, but I'm going to manually enter the services for this new client, and then I'll be back. So I actually added two items for her class registration and membership. This is kind of thought of, think of it as like an 
intangible item, but not really so much a service versus if we come over to service, I've got 30 minute coaching and 60 minute coaching. I put the prices, not dealing with taxes here. These are not taxable services. You're gonna have to investigate whether or not the services and um, items you provide are taxable for your jurisdiction. A couple things, everything has to have a unique name and if you want to delete things by clicking over here, you, you, know, you can click them all or click them one at a time, you're able to delete or archive. One way to handle like, items with the same name is to go back and change one somehow if that's the one that you want to be deleted or archived, uh, somehow change it and then you can use the name again. All right, and if I hadn't closed out of this to-do list here, the fourth step was to create an invoice. This particular account doesn't need to send an invoice yet. It's brand new, but what I want to point out here is that this will be the, you can go here to create invoices. You can click here. But the important thing is on actually sending that new invoice is really what you need to do. The first step is to set up your online payment. So you can come here, click this. The other place you can go, y'all, is here and go to online payment settings. I'll click here. Now, I recommend setting up FreshBooks payments. And I'm gonna walk through that now. I do wanna scroll down and show you a couple of other items. When you send a FreshBooks invoice, you're gonna have the ability to say what different ways you wanna get paid. And you can connect your Stripe account and you can connect your PayPal account. I want to recommend you do as few of these as possible. I see a lot of business owners try to throw in every possible payment method and it it starts to get really complicated and the amount of time you're going to spend for the few cents that you might save is, is just not worth it. FreshBooks Payments is powered by WePay and it sends that uh, expense for processing into your FreshBooks, which makes bank reconciliation really, really easily, easily done. And if you start taking Venmo and who knows what else, you're gonna just start to get complicated and those fees are not gonna be automatically pushed over. So get started with online payments. Let's go ahead. You quickly will arrive to this st step where you have to basically verify yourself. You have to set up this payment processing account. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's gonna be lots of steps to verify your business, verify your business bank account, verify where you want the deposits to be sent. Go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna walk through that, but I'm pointing you to doing this as a part of your very initial FreshBooks setup. Get this set up so you can start taking payments. You'll be very professional. They'll be able to click a button on the invoice. Please do this. All right, I'm closing that. The main, the main point here, y'all, is this is where you're gonna begin to send an invoice. And like, so let's say you don't have your payments set up at all. You would still be able to send an invoice and accept payments some other way but you're gonna to need to start collecting money, so this is where you're gonna go. I wanna take a moment to mention one quick app that I personally use to help collect payments from my own clients. It's called Melio. It does have an integration with FreshBooks for accounts receivable. And so if you go to the description below, you can open a Melio account. You can connect it to FreshBooks. Whenever you create an invoice in FreshBooks, a little while later, it's gonna be pushed to Melio, and then you'd be able to actually send the invoice from Melio instead of from FreshBooks, and by doing that, you're allowing your customer to pay you for free. If they choose to use a credit card, they'll pay those fees. If they choose to use ACH, it will be free. So I use that personally, and um, I have a tutorial about it that'll be all linked below. Now, the next step is do connecting your bank accounts. You come here to the accounting tab, and you're gonna go to connect my bank. If one of these banks are yours, that's fine. Otherwise, click here, find your bank. So type in your bank, it'll come up and go through the prompts to connect it. FreshBooks only imports 90 days worth of transactions. So if you have more than that, you actually have to put in a support ticket and give them a CSV or the PDFs of your bank statements and ask them to put the transactions that are older than 90 days into FreshBooks for you. So that's a little trick. At the time of this recording in April 2022, that's the step to get those other ones in there. So we're going to connect and then I'll be back. One other real quick note, you can also find the way to connect your bank accounts from the gear icon. Now, an absolutely critical step is to set your opening balance. So we're here in the accounting tab after the banks have been connected, bank and credit card. For this account, it was started 
on March 2nd. So I'm going to pick March 1st and I'm going to put zero dollars. And all right, now we're cooking with gas. We have this initial investment that this client made into the company. So this is going to be marked as owner's equity. We're going to leave this here until we categorize it properly in the expenses tab. Let's go back to accounting and set the opening balance for this credit card. This account was opened on March 26th, so I'm going to pick March 25th. Zero. Skip that. Let's just take a peek. And these are the transactions that have happened so far. If your list is longer than this, the thing I want you to look for is to see if you have any payments in here. That would be like the positive numbers in here. Now I have a tutorial about how to properly categorize credit card payments, but you need to mark them as a transfer. Um, I can't really demonstrate that exactly right because these are all outflows, but you would click the one that is a payment and you're going to mark it as a transfer. And you have to do that both from the credit card side and the checking account side. So there would have been an outflow from checking that said, that, you know, that was the exact same number as this inflow to pay off the credit card. And both of them have to be matched as transfers. So depending on how far back your history goes, you will have to do that step as well. This client, super on the ball, just started her company and and doesn't want to make a mess with her bookkeeping. So she is starting from pretty much day one. So quick recap where we've, where we've gone so far. We've gone through those first four steps that FreshBooks recommends. We added our company info. We added our clients. We added items and services. And we set up our invoicing situation, which includes figuring out how you're going to be paid. And if you want to connect WePay or Stripe or PayPal to be able to have your invoices have like a clickable payment link. And then we have connected our accounts to use the power of the cloud accounting technology to have the bank or the credit card push our transactions, our actual expenses and full transaction history into FreshBooks. Now what do we do? I think we should start to categorize some of those expenses. So let's go do that. Here in the expenses tab, we're going to start working our way through the items that the bank imported. I'm just going to use this as a very quick example of how to do this. So, so this was actually the fee for the credit card. So we're going to call this Southwest Credit Card is the merchant. I will probably put this as bank fees. Sorry, that changed. I didn't hit create that. So now we have the pos now we have the proper merchant and the proper category. If we had needed to assign this to a client or project, we could do that from in here. I really don't ever think you need to mess with this thing called tax amount. I don't know why it's in here. So if this number ha that included taxes, it's already going to be baked in here. It's not like sometimes you might buy something for on Amazon that was $89 and it had $10 of taxes to get you to 99, but it's all a business expense. So you can just categorize it one time. This is the notes that the bank imposed imported, that this credit card imported, uh, it was correct. This is an annual membership fee. You have the ability to put apply to future expenses. I would use this cautiously. I think probably after a couple months of doing your books, you're going to know whether those uh, expenses are regular. And so use that. Um, one, one issue would be is if, you know, if you have a bunch of Amazon charges, that's probably not something you're going to want to put apply to future expenses because we all buy all sorts of things off of Amazon, right? So um, anyway, you can attach a receipt here. I recommend. Let me take a peek here behind advanced expense settings for you. If you assign something to a project, it's going to automatically mark this as cost of goods sold. And there's a good chance, depending on the business you're in, that it should not be marked to cost of goods sold. So you would want to come and change that. You have to do that manually here in the advanced settings. Um, but this is, this looks good. So we're going to save this. Now the goal is to work your way through all of the stuff that has been imported. I'm going to do that right now for this client and I'll be back. All right. So I took care of that. I want to point out one quick thing. Whenever you see check boxes in FreshBooks, um, th there's, there's not an example here for me to show you, but if I click here and here, I get this bulk actions. And if I wanted to have named these the same category or the same merchant or the same project, for instance, you can do that in bulk. So those of you who have a lot larger lists, so you know you connected your bank and your credit card and you've got a hundred things sitting in here and a lot of it is the same, you can use that bulk categorization feature. I have a video about 
all the places that I notice that there are bulk categorization features in FreshBooks, um, and I'll link that below, and it might be popping up right here. So this is all properly categorized, but for this client, and I'm guessing you're the same, you might have some expenses that are not on your business card. Maybe you um, were testing out the idea of your business for a few months um, and you put them on a personal card or something else. So we need to get those expenses in here. And this is how I recommend doing it. I go, recommend going to more actions and go to import expenses from a file. Note that it has to be a CSV format. And we have these expenses in. You can see that their source is imported from a file. So that's good information. This little tiny gray part underneath the date is always the source. So one thing we can do is change the category if we wanted to. So I can put all of these to software. So G Google Domains, you know, that you may or may not want to put that to software. I kind of generally categorize things that I sort of buy online, like subscriptions as like software as a service. You might even change the name of software to software as a service, but categorize it to whoever you want. But the point is, I'm telling you that I can bulk recategorize all of those. This last one was education and training. So things are looking good. Now we want to reconcile our account. So I've gone to accounting and to reconcile. And the reason we want to do this is because we always want our bank account balance to match our FreshBooks balance. So you can see, this is how you would manually reconcile negative five, negative five. And we are now done and they're matched. One thing I want to say is I know that this client is actually going to go back and attach all those receipts because they are very detailed like that. I work with them on another company as well. Once they do that, all of these things that are reconciled um, are going to be kicked out of this reconciliation screen. Any change you make is going to kick out your bank reconciliation, trans your reconciled transactions, and they'll be back over here and unmatched. But I'm trying to demonstrate this for you, and they're gracious enough to let me use their account to do that. So we'll go back here and match this one. Now, now this matches too. And you might be wondering what this little guy is. The reason that is showing up is because it is an entry in FreshBooks and the filter is set for this date, so anything before March. So this is a personal transaction. It is not on the bank account or the credit card. So that leads me to our next thing that we need to do. I'm going to show you what I want us to do. Here in the report section, if we go to the general ledger, the very first account that we're going to see is petty cash. And I'm going back to the very beginning. Oops, sorry. I need to change this one. I think their first transaction was in July. So I'm going to go back to June. And I'm going to show you these are, there's nothing in petty cash except for the transactions that were in there before the banks were connected. Um, I actually have a full tutorial as about what this petty cash does in my weekly checklist for FreshBooks users and how it should look. And all that you should have in petty cash is your credit card payments from your bank account to your credit card bouncing back and forth. I call it like a ping pong ball. It's going to go right, left, right, left, right, left. Um, but petty cash should always equal zero. So these are all basically owner's contributions this, comp this client made to her company before she opened her account. So, you know, she put 5,000 cash into her checking account, which I demonstrated earlier, but really she also invested this much in her company, 6797 seven, and then a bunch of $6 transactions. And we need to move these out of petty cash and into owner's equity. Now, in order to do that, you have to be able to make a journal entry. And in order to do that, you have to be an accountant user. Now, you can invite a FreshBooks accountant to be your support person, and we can help you. I mean, I, I, I serve clients on FreshBooks, so you can invite me to have access as your accountant user. You can also just invite yourself. So pick a different email address, and I will show you um, how to do that. So to do that, you go to my team 
invite accountant user for free. So I will have her invite me. Okay, so now I am in, you can tell, an abbreviated version of this. Now, if you invite an accountant professional as your you know, certified FreshBooks accounting partner, as your uh, accounting pro, we are actually going to get uh, a lot more access turned on over here. But if you just invite yourself, this is what your accountant access is going to look like. And you're going to want to move those expenses to your balance sheet and out of petty cash. Actually, they're on your balance sheet. You want to move them from petty cash to owner's equity. So by coming to accounting, go to view your accounts. So we need to clear out this petty cash account. One thing I want to say is it's only showing negative 18 here. The, the reason it's doing that is because it is filtered for just 2022. Um, so it's not e exactly right in terms of the balance. Um, and I'm going to want to do two things. So I'm, you may or may not have to do this depending on whether your transactions happened over the course of the year. I actually want to move two journal entries. I'm going to move everything that happened in 2021 out, and then I'm going to do another one for 2022. Okay, so let's talk about this journal entry. So these are the expenses I'm labeling. I'm putting it as December 31st. I could do a journal entry for each one of the transactions and move them on that particular date, but this is going to be sufficient for this client and probably for your situation too. What, so what's happening here? We are debiting petty cash. If you recall, the on the general ledger, the petty cash transactions that totaled up to this were on the, the right side, the credit side. So we're going to put that on the debit side to wash that out. And then we want to add equity to our company. This, this individual has invested 6,821 additional dollars um, from her personal transactions into this business. And so by crediting equity, it will, it will increase it. So we're going to click save and everything looks good. It's really important to get this right because there's no delete journal entry feature, y'all. You will have to reverse your journal entries if you ever mess up. So take your time on this. And then there were three $6 transactions in 2022. So I have same thing, debiting petty cash, crediting owner's equity. I'm picking March 31st because the last transaction was in March. And so we're just going to wash it out as of then. So now a couple of tests. Let's go to the general ledger and we're going to filter for all the dates in this account. It's the, today's the 8th. And I want to show you what's happening. So these were all the expenses from last year and I washed them out. These were all the expenses from this year that were on personal and I washed them out. And now that petty cash balance is zero. Everything's going to go to petty cash first, y'all, as you're swiping your cards or you writing checks or accepting, like it's all going to go to petty cash until you categorize it and reconcile your accounts. And so when you do um, this, this account should always stay at zero. So that is something that needed to be ha needed to happen for this client. It likely might need to happen for you. So add those expenses from your personal cards if necessary. All right, I'm actually not done <laughs> emphasizing this point, y'all. I want to show you the balance sheet and how this shows up. So you'll see that there's nothing here called petty cash. So if there was something in petty cash, it's going to show up on the balance sheet, but we got it down to zero. So that's why it's not here. So always on your balance sheet and check that that's getting washed out. And then the other place I wanted to show you, we got owner's equity here. So before I went and added those personal transactions, the owner's equity was only that $5,000, I think that was for the opening of the checking account, but she had this additional uh, amount of money in that she had been spending on personal cards that we needed to put in here. And so this owner's equity really um, jumped up. It, it, it jumped up by about 6,800 bucks. And that's what should happen to your account as well. So you can go check your balance sheet to make sure it's all looking right. I like the whole story to tell the, the exact right story. Also, I, I, I explain it in a lot of ways. There's always multiple ways to come at your reports and to double check that they're all saying the same story. All right, I came back to the accounting tab and then to the chart of accounts. The other thing I wanted to tell you while I'm here in viewing this as the accountant user is this is where you would add a new chart of accounts. I'm filming this in April of 2022 and I have great expectations for FreshBooks to continue to develop this out 
the thing I want to warn you about is that by adding something into the chart of accounts, it, you're not adding something that you'll be able to select whenever you are in your expenses tab and you're categorizing expenses, y'all. So, uh, and I, that took me a little bit of time to learn because I was expecting that. I wanted to come in here and add, you know, um, software expenses or I wanted to add things that were unique to a business like um, cleaning supplies or, you know, whatever, whatever you needed to add. But, and I thought, okay, let's, I went crazy in the chart of accounts and the expenses labeling are actually, think of them more as like subcategories. And so don't, don't go hog wild in here. Um, even if you invite yourself as your accountant user. Y'all, while I am here in this chart of accounts and this journal entry section, I just want to talk to you about any of you, any of you who have fixed assets. This is where you would get started putting that in FreshBooks. I am hoping that you don't have assets that you need to be booking here, though. <laughs> it's... It's, it's clunky. It's going to take a lot of hoops to jump through to do this properly. If you are someone that has fixed assets to add, hopefully they're just a smaller number, like not in value, but in the number of assets that you have to, that you want to put in here, and that you reach out to someone like me or use FreshBooks support, direct support to get help doing this. If they are historical, it'll be one way of handling it. If you have purchase them on your business card like recently and, and they're they've been pushed into the bank account that's going to be a separate way of handling it i actually think it's easier if you didn't pay for it with the the business card and then you could just book it as um, a debit to the asset and a credit to the owner's equity that's like the simplest way to do that if y'all are familiar with accounting and had an accounting class that hopefully what I just described will be easy, make sense to you. Uh, but if not, reach out, reach out for help. All right, I'm just coming back here to the actual client file to tell you a couple other places to go. If you want to start recording time to projects, you can come here to time tracking. This button down here will allow you to start a timer. You can also add manual entries this way. If you want to start creating estimates, you can come over here and create a new estimate. I want to point out one other thing that might work for you is this thing called checkout links. If you do this, you can, you have to have FreshBooks payments set up, but you can get paid very quickly. All right, I'm guessing you might feel like your head's about to explode right now, so I'm going to stop. This is really just like how to handle FreshBooks from the first in the first few moments that you open your account so I hope this was helpful getting you started I have a lot of other videos that will be a resource for you if you need help reach out if you would like to consider joining my weekly office hours you can reach out about that service as well we have got a great group and we it's like having a bookkeeper in your back pocket um, throughout your whole business journey subscribe to the YouTube channel because I make a video each week I'm Kate Josephine Johnson and I help businesses build their business legacy